Hello everyone and welcome to the second match uh, of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Challenge Finals. It's uh, Hikaru Nakamura versus Daniel Dubov and this is game one. Uh, in match one, uh, Nakamura was victorious. He won two and a half, one and a half. Uh, and now uh, if Dubov wants to get back into the match, he needs to win this match and then uh, go into the third match. So uh, we'll see what happens already. Game one is very exciting. Uh, Nakamura with the white pieces uh, goes for E4. Sorry about that. Uh, we have c5 uh, by Dubov going for the Sicilian, knight to f3, knight to c6. Uh, and now Nakamura doesn't go for the for the open with the d4, but rather c3, the Alapin variation of the Sicilian. Uh, and okay, knight f6, uh, we have e5, knight to d5, and bishop to c4. So this is all very standard, knight to b6, puts pressure on the bishop, the bishop b3, and now c4. Uh, bishop back to c2 and now of course d5 grabbing grabbing the center uh, which Nakamura decides to, to, to capture al so uh, e captures on d6 queen captures and now just castles uh, so bishop to g4 developing and pinning that knight and queen to e2 uh, we have queenside castles by Dubov and now knight to a3 going after that c4 pawn and here there are uh, some games where queen to f6 was played also there uh, e5 is a known move in the position but queen to e6 uh, by Dubov is a new move so already as of move 11 we have a completely new game uh, Dubov offers a queen trade uh, which Nakamura goes for we have queen captures on e6 bishop captures and now b3 uh, you want to get rid of this uh, c4 pawn so you can finally uh, get this d4 pawn in because if uh, just d4 then you will uh, again uh, lose the pawn here and you kind of don't want to have it uh, all the way to d2 uh, as it's a backwards pawn you cannot develop your bishop get your rooks into the game uh, and so on so b3 preparing to capture on c4 and bishop to d5 now uh, we have b captures on c4 knight captures on c4 knight captures and bishop captures and now uh, Nakamura doesn't go for d4 right away. First he goes rook to e1. Of course, if you go d4, you're going to lose the rook here. So rook to e1, and here bishop to d3. Now Dubov doesn't allow d4. Uh, he wants Nakamura to keep his backwards d2 pawn. So here Nakamura trades. We have captures, captures, and rook to e3. Now either forcing the rook back or, or hoping for a trade here. So rook back to d7 by Dubov. And now again, not going for d4, Nakamura goes for bishop to a3, with the idea that after e6 or e5, you can just uh, gobble up the bishop on f8. Uh, which Dubov goes for with e5. Uh, yes, there's a double attack here, but also if the knight moves, then also rook captures on d2 will be an idea. So bishop captures on f8, we have rook captures on f8, and now uh, again, not... Uh, doing anything with the d pawn but first h4 making some room for the king also preparing h5 uh, but now uh, instead of uh, h4 you could have perhaps go gone for knight captures on e5 but then again you give up the d2 pawn you will be left with the isolated c and a pawn so uh, nakamura decides that he he prefers to keep his d2 pawn so f6 by dubo strengthening the e5 pawn and now h5 uh, and now rook f to d8 again uh, putting pressure on the d2 pawn with king to f1 uh, and now b6 uh, making room for the king to enter the game g3 and now king to b7 uh, we have king to g2 and now knight to e7 the knight is no longer needed here as the e5 pawn is nicely protected and you want to uh, remaneuver it uh, somewhere else uh, maybe you can get it uh, uh, to, to d5 to, uh, to attack the rook and from there you can also go to, to all sorts of squares or maybe you can go something like f5 d6 b5 and, and so on so rook to e4 uh, now uh, with more control of the d4 square so maybe you can get some uh, rook to d1 to d4 moves in uh, however rook to d3 now now dubov doesn't allow it and although it was never a mistake uh for nakamura not to play d4 by uh, by allowing the pawn to remain on d2 it's just a it's just a big problem uh, uh for, for the rest of the game uh but okay we have a4 by nakamura and now knight to c6 uh not the knight can now come to a5 to b3 or maybe a5 and then to c4 and you can put additional pressure to the d2 pawn with the knight as well as the rooks are already nicely doubled on the d file so rook to e2 nakamura has to uh, set up a defense here and knight to a5 the knight will now join in the attack on the d2 pawn so rook to a2 defending and now knight to c4 adding a, a third attacker and now just g4 the d2 pawn is nicely defended uh, we have rook eight to d5 
uh, just uh, uh, grabbing more space, increasing the activity of the rooks. Uh, and here Nakamura has to decide whether he just wants to repeat moves as he doesn't really have uh, any active plans. For example, king g3, let's say king c6, uh, you're going to go back king g2, h6, king g3, and so on. And it's uh, hard to say how black will improve. Black is, of course, better. He has a much more active king, much more active pieces. Uh, but it's unclear where he will create his breakthrough. So here, instead of going for uh, for passivity, uh, Nakamura goes knight to h4. He wants to go knight f5, put some pressure on the pawns here, and maybe create a pass pawn of his own on the king's side. But it comes with uh, a price of one pawn. So Dubov grabs it, rook captures on d2. And now knight to f5, attacking the g7 pawn with rook captures on a2, rook captures, and now g6. Uh, we have h captures, h captures, and now knight to e7 with an attack on the uh, rook and on the pawn here. And now rook to d7 by Dubov. Problem is, if you capture here, then rook to g7, the knight has to move and the Dubov again will uh, win a pawn. So Nakamura goes knight to g8 here, puts pressure on the f6 pawn, but now f5, and Dubov gets to keep his extra pawn. So captures, captures, and now knight to h6, putting more pressure on the pawn here. Rook to g7, check by Dubov, king f3, and now comes rook to g5. Just defending this, and the pawns are uh, making it... Uh, that's a weird arrow. Uh, whoa. The, the pawns are making it impossible for the uh, king to, to reach uh, e either of them. So knight to f7, again pressuring the rook, rook h5, and now king to g3. Uh, we have rook to h7, going after the knight, knight to g5, and now rook to d7, preparing rook to d3, check to gobble up the c3 pawn as well. Uh, so uh, there isn't really all that much for Nakamura to do here. He's down a pawn and uh, his position isn't all that great. He goes king to h4, he wants to go king h5 to g6 and maybe gobble up the pawns this way. So Dubov immediately goes after the pawn. We have king h5, rook captures on c3, and here comes uh, the moment from the title of the video. Uh, here Nakamura has to go, of course, king g6, try and put pressure on these pawns, but he goes king to h6. Now, this was a mouse slip. There is no uh, other way around it. And it's it's really interesting, this uh, concept of mouse slips in elite chess. So when it's online... Uh, of course, Nakamura would never play such a move as the move makes no sense. You have to play king g6 and go after the f5 pawn. But it's uh, uh, there's no way to uh, to not allow such things. For example, th there should be maybe some uh, some overlord overseeing th the game that would say, okay, th that's impossible for Nakamura to play a move like that. Uh, we, we should allow him to, to take back the move. However, it, it's not really possible, uh, you know, uh, uh, until the, until they start playing with, let's say, some sort of a neural interface, uh, mouse slips uh, are bound to happen. So here Nakamura played king to h6, which of course, uh, he was in a worse position and now he gives uh, Dubov uh, a tempo uh, and it's just not helping him. And here, if you don't think that it was a mouse slip, here is Nakamura's reaction after this move. So there you have it. There you can see that, that that's what happened when he played king h6. He doesn't believe uh, he, he committed this mouse slip, uh, but it does happen. Uh, so king h6, and now Dubov is just one move closer to victory. King c6, now king g6 by Nakamura, uh, and f4 now. Uh, sorry, f, <laughs> f4 by black. Not allowing the capture, uh, we have knight to e4. Uh, and now comes rook to a3, offering a trade and of course going after the a4 pawn. So rook c2 attacking the knight and now just rook captures on a4. So now Dubov is up three pawns, which is of course completely winning. Uh, but Nakamura will do his best not to not to lose this. Here b5, uh, of course Dubov will now start pushing his pass pawn and rook to c1. Rook to a3 and now rook to d1. There's not much you can do but wait for Dubov to push his pawn b4. Rook to d8, maybe you can deliver some checks from behind, but knight to b6, not allowing it. King captures on e5, but now b3. Dubov doesn't care about pawns here. Uh, rook to d6, check king to b5, and rook to d1. Uh, and now king to b4. Uh, getting the king uh, closer in, not allowing any, any forks, any knight to c3 check ideas. Uh, and here uh, Nakamura could grab yet another pawn, but it doesn't help him. Just b2, rook to b1, and now knight c4 or king b3 defends the pawn. Rook to a1 on the next move will win. There's not much you can do here. So king to d4 by Nakamura, but now rook to a5. Now uh, you will go uh, behind the king, maybe grab the rook. So knight to c3, 
uh, but it was also uh, in this position after knight to c3 that Hikaru Nakamura resigned the game and game one of the second match goes to Dubov as there is nothing more to be done here the idea is the same you're going to push b2 and after the rook blocks of course you're going to play either king b3 or knight to c4 and next move rook to a1 wins the game and if knight d1 let's say you want to win the pawn then just king b3 you add another defender now the knight and king are defending the pawn and rook to a1 wins the game on the next move uh, so yeah, after this knight to c3, Nakamura resigns and uh, Dubov wins the game. Uh, we can check out this uh, this blunder uh, blunder reaction one more time, uh, just just for the fun of it. So let's uh, let's enjoy this. There there you go. It it just uh, you know it, it, they're playing online. Mouse slips will happen, and we just have to get used to it. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Kieran Saini, uh, Brandon Quintal, Jeff Graves, Robert Fowler, and uh, David Brown for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage of the Lindoris Abbey Rapid Challenge Finals, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.